Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week. We hope you enjoy the episode. I think for at least two years we've been trying to do what we're about to reveal we are doing. Do you think that's right? About mate, two years? Mate, we have been talking about it forever. Forever? Yeah, we have. Okay, long story short, let's rip the band-aid off. This year, Tony and I are going to be attempting <laughs> to do two driving tours with all of you. Yeah, <laughs> we want to bring you along. Well, I should say all in inverted commas, <laughs> yeah. really, because, well, that's Four unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, um, it's something we've discussed forever. Mm. Uh, as you will know, if you watch the main channel or listen to this podcast regularly enough, Tony and I spend a lot of our time, or a lot more of my time, on the road. Yeah. Uh, doing road trips, going on adventures, enjoying our cars in other parts of the world. And mm -hmm. we discuss it a lot here and we see a lot of comments. Oh, I wish I could join you guys at one point. Oh, where did you go? I want to go and do that. Or I've just done the trip you guys did last year. We thought, well, wouldn't it be amazing if we could think of a way that many of you could, could join us yeah. on a trip or, or various trips? And some of our best memories as friends, mate, have been on road trips. Yeah. I and mean, some of the best stories we've shared on this podcast yeah, yeah. have been from road trips. Yeah, so yeah. It, it felt right. Great synergy yeah. between what we do here and what we do on the road. Slight problem. <laughs> At any given week, there seems to be a, between 75 and 100,000 of you listening. So Yeah. Getting you all on the road with us at any one time, quite difficult to do, uh, especially as you seem to be located all around the world. Yeah. So, look, this is going to be a bit of a trial. So so we're looking at maybe doing this and maybe in years to come, we'll roll this into becoming a big new venture for us. Mm -hmm. We'll launch a new company and yep. multiple trips per year. And as many of you can join as possible. But for now, we just want to dip our toes in the water, don't we? We do, yeah. See we just if it's possible. Bit of, bit of trial and error. A bit of trial and error. Yeah. So we're going to be doing two tours mm -hmm. um very different tours so the first thing will will be taking place in april and it's going to be kind of our bread and butter isn't it yes I, essentially yeah. what we do so it's going to be uh the best roads in one of the best countries in the world portugal uh fast roads beautiful hotels incredible food great scenery what you see on the main channel mm -hmm. um and what you hear us talking about doing yeah but opened up for a select very small group of you to join us now we say select and small because when you're doing this kind of road trip which is i say pretty much driving from dawn till dusk Yes, yeah, it's, it's seven or eight hours driving a day, basically. Absolutely. And it's enjoying the cars, enjoying the roads. Uh, it's impossible to do with a large amount of cars. This, yeah. isn't, this is not Gumball Rally. No. This is not just a group of mates out on a trip. This is, you know, going out and enjoying our cars in some beautiful locations. Yeah. Um, so it will be extremely limited in terms of its spaces. Probably eight or ten cars on that. Um but, you know, hopefully we will deliver something great because it's just what we do. We would be doing the trip anyway. <laughs> well, that's it. And we just want to bring some of you along because, like, you've been watching it all for years. And like Sam said, we, we talk about it all the while. And this is this has been our chat for two years behind the camera, essentially. Behind the glass. Wouldn't, it, <laughs> wouldn't it be good to bring some of them along? Exactly so, that. Um, yeah, that, that's that's why we, we're going to do it. That event will follow a similar, I guess, formula or recipe to other like supercar tours that you see or read about. So uh, details of that to be shared very soon. Uh, we are hopefully collaborating with an incredible event in Portugal. Um, to give you a rough idea of dates, just in case that uh, tweaks your fancy, we're looking something around the 20, the week commencing the 15th of April or the 22nd of April. So kind of keep a kind of eye on those dates and we'll be announcing how to apply for a space for that very shortly. Yep. Um, the second event though is more of a, a group convoy. It's more a rally. More of a rally. Yeah. We're hoping to get, I don't know, maybe... 30 of you maybe more again i mean yeah. i know that's still quite a small amount of spaces i wish we could say like 100 150 200 but doing something with 200 cars on the road i mean that's really hard to achieve yeah and to deliver a quality product i think you'll all know we 
like to ensure whatever we do is done to a certain level and degree. Of course. Yeah. And so whilst we're just trialing this, we're keeping the numbers pretty small. So yeah. the second event will be September or October time. Uh, again, European based. We're not going to tell you too many more details about the exact locations of that yet, but it will be wider uh, and it will, yeah, be just more about more affordable as well. More affordable. Yeah. Going on tour with us, we'll be incorporating some behind the glass live recordings in the evenings. Yeah. There'll be QA. So, yeah, that's more of like a behind the glass jolly or tour, where the first event is more like a, a driving trip with Sam and Tony, if yeah. that makes sense. And the, 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 the first trip in April will be a, a six or seven day trip, essentially, whereas the one in September will probably be over four or five days. Yeah. So it'll be a bit shorter. It'll be well. a bit shorter. Yeah. Exactly. So look, we're super excited. This is a lot of work. I know it sounds like super casual. Yeah. But we, I don't think we've underestimated it, but it's just, it is a lot of work. The yeah. route planning and logistics and hotels and timing. And as I say, ensuring that whatever trip you might be able to come on that you feel like you get a real quality product you're going to enjoy yourselves but also that you know it feels accessible and approachable for any of you anyway long story short it's big news yeah we've been building up to it um, we want when, when we go away we we want you to feel how we feel when we go away yes that's exactly so it. we'll 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 do it properly don't we'll, worry. we'll try and do it properly um so so stay tuned as i say um some rough dates for you to pencil in uh we should be able to share precise information on how to apply for the April event uh, imminently yeah. in the next few weeks. Anyway, mate, now we've got that big news out there. I feel like a weight is off my shoulders. <laughs> I mean, I've been nervous about that excitement. I've been, it's like I've like been carrying a baby for yeah. nine months. <laughs> it's felt that way at times. Um, let's get on to what we've been up to. Uh, I went on an exciting road trip, mate. I know, yeah. Normally you tell me where you're going and what you're doing. <laughs> But, but I, I looked at your Instagram at the weekend. I thought, what is he doing in Paris? Guess why I didn't tell you what I was doing. Because <laughs> I would have tried to talk you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the first road trip in my challenge for Dali. Yeah. So uh, approach, uh, I, I thought I was going to do a thousand miles. I fell just under that. I think I did about 820. Because it broke um, down. No. no. Uh, <laughs> you wish. That's why yeah. I didn't tell you what I was yeah. doing. Uh, so I had a, weirdly, I had a couple of meetings. I had a couple of meetings in Luxembourg and a couple of meetings in Paris. And it was Retromobile huh? in Paris. And I was initially looking like, you know, flying. And, stuff like that, and I thought, no, I'm mad. Like, it's the perfect opportunity to kind of just like bed in the Stradale. Just to, just to kind of like loosen things up. The car's barely moved for 10 years. I keep telling people, uh, AV Engineering did a load of initial work about five grand's worth of initial work wow. to kind of, yeah, just get some of the the essential stuff done. And this was a chance for me to get to learn the car, pick up on some creaks and rattles and go, what's that? What's this? Um, I won't share too much more. You're going to have to watch the main channel video on Sunday to see exactly what happened. And Oh, you documented it? Yeah, I documented the whole thing. Oh, you know, that's, love what, that's what I do for a living, too. Yeah. Um, uh, but all in all, unbelievable experience. Um, I mean, I've... Talked about those cars for 10 years, obsessed over them forever. It's the first time I've done a road trip in one. So I was a little bit nervous going into it. I would have been in all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had the RAC on speed dial. <laughs> Definitely made sure I had the gold package there. Did you? Yep. 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 Double checked all of that. Um, so yeah, main channel video coming in that. But let's quickly talk about Retromobile because I'd never been before. And this is completely not up your street, but I think you're going to be quite shocked. So it takes place in Paris and it is like the Geneva Motor Show for classic cars. Right. So on display, you've got Gerardo and Co., um, Simon Kidston, um, Joe Macari. I saw Joe Macari there, yeah. Yeah, some of the biggest and best classic or specialist car dealers were in Europe showing some of the most amazing cars. 250 GTOs, CLK GTRs, McLaren F1 GTRs. Um, there was a new Project One, weird, weirdly there. There was a new stand, Zonda, Zonda Cinque. Like, but just unbelievable stuff. Mate, I was blown away. You couldn't believe the amount of money spent on this event. Really? Some of the stands, dude, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of pounds <laughs> some of these companies have spent on their stands. It's outrageous. And it was packed, absolutely packed. And whilst it's not your kind of stuff, I think you would have been pretty impressed. Yeah. Was there a hospitality bit? No, nah, not really. Oh, um, I wouldn't have wanted to go then. No. Nah. <laughs> it wasn't really about hospitality. Was <laughs> walking around looking at the cars. No, it is. It's all about having a nice coffee and... Well, there was lovely coffees. Yeah. Well, and the Gerardo and Co. coffee was unbelievable. Was it? Oh, mate. Top yeah, notch. and having a... Having a sausage roll and a grin, that sort of thing, you know? Well, it was Paris, so people were having crepes and things like that. And right. croissants. You know the bakery Paul? 
Or Bull? Yes. Bull? I, yeah, yeah. Bull? Had Were the, they there? They had a stand. They had a whole thing They're going French, on. I gather. Oh, uh, yeah, we. Oui. Obviously. We. Oui. Oui. Many, many coffee. Did you try and speak French to people? I, mean, I always do, man. You do, oh, yeah. I slip into a little high school. Oh, <laughs> parlez-vous anglais? <laughs> Bonjour, mon ami. Uh, or I text Septon and say, what on earth is going on right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I actually... <laughs> genuinely think you would have enjoyed it because they had everything they had old rally cars things that you would have remembered from your youth what Subarus and stuff yeah uh, more French <laughs> Citroëns and, oh I still and, like that yeah. done. mate just honestly Peugeots and stuff literally Love all it. of that stuff yeah um, they had a few new manufacturer stands obviously Volkswagen are going big with this whole 50 years of the golf thing and uh, MG were there with, with their new Saber Stir Saber Stir what's that called? you know that electric convertible speeds to think oh, like. oh yeah 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 it was just cool like honestly i think i did it perfectly i went in with zero expectations yeah spent about five hours there saw some friends shook some hands drooled over everything and left because it'd be very easy to get overwhelmed and spend three days there well, there's some that much do. to look at yeah yeah there's that yeah. much to look at so I think yeah, it's if you get an invite, don't knock it immediately because it's and there was a big auction. RM oh, Sotheby's doing a huge auction there. Were they? Yeah, MC uh, twelve Maserati MC twelve there. Oh mate, oh, unbelievable event! Lovely. So really cool. Um, and glad I went. And my meetings were all very successful. Really? So watch this space. And well done. Some future announcements on the main channel coming soon. Oh, here we go. Big moves happening. Oh, no. Watch me, uh, watch Someone's going to suffer. My MC12 <laughs> will be coming soon enough, based on the meetings I had. My gosh. Um, uh, but during that trip is when the world got shook. Pretty much. I was, I was halfway into my drive to Luxembourg, stopped to get fuel. Uh. Thought I'd better check the phone because I've been up since 4 a.m. I haven't checked it for a while. And I got Paul Wallace in the chat. Oh. Mate, I know you're driving. Have you seen this F1 chat? And I was like, what's he on about? Because all I had seen was the night before Will Buxton. You know Will Buxton? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, as, in, as in I know. Yeah, yeah. He put out a tweet being like, I've just heard a rumour. If there's any truth to it, the F1 world's going to be shook. Like, it's the biggest news ever, like, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess that's come to fruition somehow. I wonder what it could be. Definitely wasn't expecting no. to open my Twitter and see Hamilton to Ferrari. So come on, talk to me. What were your initial thoughts, I guess, before it got confirmed, when the rumours started to ickle through, trickle through, uh, what was your gut reaction? Well, he, he's he been linked to him before, mate. So I didn't pay too much attention to it, to be fair. And, and Paul put something in the group that I'd seen the night before, even the night before then on, on Twitter. And I paid no, like, whatever, but this has been said before. And then, like, literally out of nowhere, and it was really quite funny because it was uh, deadline day in the football for the transfers. Okay. And there was absolutely nothing going on. Really? And then, no, literally nothing <laughs> going on. And then this massive big news broke that was absolutely nothing to do with football and to do with F1. And it literally took over the whole sport world as, as it would. It's, you know, been titled around that it's the the biggest move in formula one for a driver to move to a team yeah it's 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 really hard to quantify that because i mean hamilton to mercedes was almost as controversial but maybe not as big because he was only a one-time world champion then i think his stock within the f1 market was high but not as high as it is today mm. but then he's also basically 40 years old so, so that was weird but schumacher from benetton to to ferrari was fairly aggressive uh senna from mclaren to williams i think was pretty shocking because there is arch rivals so, so there have been others and maybe you would go back to um who else could you say was big but anyway there have been a few fair but this is one of the biggest, and I think it transcended Formula One and transcended sport slightly. Mm. Because even if you don't follow F1, you've heard of Ferrari, you've probably heard of Lewis Hamilton, just by the by. So yeah, well, I, I was I was literally driving around in the car the other day, and I was thinking about this, as in you know, world recognised sportsman, mm -hmm. and it's like it, it, like. Indian people for cricketers, you know, they, they were on the radio, they were talking about some cricketer that lives in India and he's got uh, like a, 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 a billion followers on 
Instagram. He's, sure, you know, he's got huge. Can't walk down the street. Never yeah. heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's huge in India. But what, but but then that what made me think like people like Hamilton, Ronaldo, Messi, um, Federer, Nadal, <laughs> Djokovic, yeah, Tiger Woods, yes, LeBron James, yeah, Serena Williams, Venus Williams. Mm. Mm. No, everyone's heard of the Williams sisters, mate. Do you think? Everyone's heard of the Williams sisters. One minute, I'm bloody hell, Will Smith just made a movie about them. For <sighs> okay, sure, okay. for sure, the Williams sisters. Um, Tom Brady. The, yeah, Tom yeah, Brady. He's yeah, another one. I would say. Uh, but would everyone know what Tom Brady looked like? I'm not yeah. certain. I mean, I do know what Tom Brady looks like. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, Lewis is up there with... Interna- oh, Usain Bolt. You, mm, well, yeah, yeah, I think you said yeah, world's maybe. fastest man. I think, yeah, I think most people know the name at least. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, uh, probably worldwide sports people. Because, David Beckham. D- yeah, David Beckham, yeah. arguably. Yeah. Um, I think there's probably, arguably, it's bad now. No female golfers. Female football is not a thing yet because it's just going through its up run now. Tennis for sure. What other? Because there must be a few other huge female sports stars that we're completely forgetting about now. Um, tennis it's always been tennis hasn't it yeah um, pretty much yeah but anyway there will be a handful of sports people I'd say I'd say like anyone in the boxing world less yeah of course Tyson well, Fury and no but go Mike, back before, Mike Tyson Mike Tyson Frank exactly Bruno, yeah, Muhammad Lewis, Ali, all yeah, that yeah, Muhammad Ali so, yeah, so yeah. probably like 50 yeah there's I think, not many yeah, yeah. I, I think you know like that, that you could go through that are like global sports Icons. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do it right now. And when we say that, what we mean is, is that you could, uh, someone could walk down a street anywhere in the world, and someone would go, "Oh, there's Lewis Hamilton, or there's Ronaldo, or." So this is an interesting. This is the greatest athletes of all time. So this is not anything to do with most recognisable anything like that. So let's let's just uh, top fifty. So let's just rattle through them and think, see if we agree. Yeah. Dwayne the Rock Johnson is now a movie star. He's a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Hoy, too niche. Cycling. No. Uh, Not Sergei Bukba. Don't actually know how to pronounce no it. Athletics guy. Jonathan Cruff. No idea. Football, apparently. No idea. Never heard of him. Won the Ballon d'Or three times. Must be old. Uh, Drew Brees, American Home? football. Uh, Cruyff. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so. Cruyff. What's he talking about? Never heard of him. <laughs> Mike Tyson boxing. Oh, Simone Biles, gymnastics. You wouldn't know who she no, is. No, no, no. Uh, American gymnast. Serena Williams, tennis. Uh, Ronaldo, football. Brett Favre, American football. Uh, Tony Hawk, skateboarding. Yeah, yeah. Tony Hawk. Uh, I've heard the name. Yeah, I don't know what he does. I wouldn't know if he walked down the street. Tony Hawk, skateboarding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John Cena, wrestling. Uh, Michael Vick, American football. Hayley Gabrielle, Gabrielessi, athletics. Uh, Larry Bird, basketball. Barry Sanders, American football. Michael Johnson, uh, athletics. Derek Jeter, bar- uh, baseball. Never heard of him. Uh, there's a lot of Americans. This must be an American website. Yeah, yeah. Jackie Robinson, baseball. Daley Thompson, decathlon. But you're right. Some of these, like Peyton Manning, American football. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see who you're going to know. Because you're not going to know a lot. Zinedine Zidane. Yeah, yeah. Tiger Woods. Bru- okay, here we go. Let's do top 20. Tiger Woods, Bruce Lee. Tom yep. Brady, Jesse Owens, yep. Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel yep. Messi, Le- yep. LeBron James, Roger Federer, yep. Joe Montana, a biggest American football star of all, all time, Pele, right. uh, Bo Jackson. Don't but wouldn't know what that Tanner bloke looked like if you walked past me in the street. No, though. I think he could be dead as well. Okay. Babe Ruth. <laughs> Babe Ruth. <laughs> Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps yeah, swimming yeah. here. Yeah, Usain yeah. Bolt. Wayne Gretzky, ice hockey. Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan. <laughs> I mean, there's debate to be had there. Anyway, what were we talking about? <laughs> you were <laughs> arguing that Lewis Hamilton, one of the biggest global sports stars. Full stop. Full stop. Okay, I fine. think he would be known everywhere in the way, around the world. I know you mentioned, the reason why I say it's, it's, I think it's one of the biggest moves, if not in history, is because of, he's a marketing powerhouse, mm-hmm, mate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whereas, um, you know, because of we, social media wasn't around and the way that the media operate now, Senna and Schumacher, they weren't as marketable as Lewis is now because it was a different era, it was a different world. Sure, I think I, I definitely Senna was more than Schumacher. At that point in Schumacher's career, he wasn't the global icon that he went on to become. Fair. So I totally agree with you there. And Hamilton has redefined what being a Formula One driver can mean. Yeah commercially outside of the sport exactly so if you if you look if you look commercially and reach you know ferrari being 
the big power. We'd we'd all agree that Ferrari is a brand of bigger than Mercedes, right? As a as a marketable brand, right? And Hamilton is definitely the most marketable brand of driver by none in F1. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's not even close. Mm-hmm. You know that when you go to the races because you go to the Mercedes garage, you can't move because everyone wants to see Lewis. So that's what I mean. Combining them two together is, is you know, something that's unheard of. Was there therefore a cynical part of your brain that thought it was like the, the Real Madrid Galacticos? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Thought, hold yeah. on a sec, maybe this is just that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, is a, this is a money end of career money play? No, I don't think it was. I don't think it's an end of career money play for sure. He's not. He's not going there for the money, mate. Although he, he's getting <laughs> quite a lot of money. Obviously, isn't it rumored a hundred million a year? Yeah, hundred million dollars. Yeah. yeah, but but it all depends how that's flowered up with sponsorships. Yeah, of course, and, of course. You but know, still, yeah, he's probably on a hundred million a year at, at Mercedes, and it, he's just paid differently. Well, we're never going to know mm-hmm. that bit, you know, because whatever the. I'm not. I'm not really sure it's about money because he's got too much money anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Essentially, he he's obviously got in the sim in this current car and thought Mercedes aren't going to get. You know, they're not going to challenge anytime soon. Now's my time to try something new. So mm-hmm. I'm going to. I'm go- Ferrari have offered him the opportunity. A uh, a uh, uh, a brand he's always spoke highly of by the way as well and he's he's jumped ship i think the things that are fascinating that i'd love to know is who approached who this winter (laughs) because because so the i think the key ingredient here i think you make a very valid point about the sim let's come back to that let's bookmark that and come back to that but i think the key point or player here is fred vasseur so you know fred vasseur who's now leading ferrari so he replaced yeah um, yeah yeah who did he replace to become, uh, what's his name? Benotto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fred Vasseur. Fred Vasseur was Lewis's team principal or, or manager. When he was a uh, kid. Team manager, yeah, for Formula 3 and GP2. Mm-hmm. Um, so just prior to F1, he was the man that kind of helped deliver the results that got Lewis into that McLaren seat in 2007 and as a rookie and, you know, very helped mold or or I don't you don't want to say mold but anyway he was there at a critical point in Lewis's mm. career there's something weird poetic romantic maybe too personal to ignore the fact that it's Fred has moved to Ferrari and after all of the speculation and you're right all of the years that Lewis has been linked there all the years he said oh I would love you know I would love to drive in red at some point Fred has been the one who's been able to crack him mm. so I would assume that when Fred got that job he got onto the blower to Lewis pretty quickly. I'm talking about last year and started to say, Lewis, come join me, man. Come there, on, come over to the red. There's lots of points that, that you're right. There's lots of points that would have to have aligned for this to happen, though. Mercedes, if Mercedes has a championship winning car and they're f- as fast as Red Bull and whatever, he's not going. Agreed. He, he's staying at Mercedes because Agreed. why would you? I There's always no smoke without fire. This has been going on for a long time. This ain't happened over the last couple of months. This has been going on for a long time. And if you remember last year, it might even go all the way back to then when Horner come out and said uh, someone from Lewis's team approached yep. Red Bull. Yep. And, and he- I think they were putting the feelers out mm. to the teams and that Fred's got involved. And I think maybe it would have been around that time that mm. Fred's jumped in and said, we'll come to Ferrari. This is the car you're going to have in 2026, 2025. When the regulations change, mm. we think we're miles ahead. And it's similar to the, you know, he took the risk with Mercedes, didn't he? Yeah, 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 you for know, sure. He's rolling, he's, he's rolling the crystal rolling ball the again, isn't he? Or rolling yeah. the dice. I mean, the, the interesting thing is Fred is, I think, often underestimated because he's a bit jovial and a bit of a, um, talk, talks a good game. But... <laughs> He's also really not an idiot. And he's been in this sport for such a long time. Forever. Literally. And a big win for him in getting Lewis to jump ship is not just that you're getting, yes, you know, arguably statistically one of the best drivers in Formula One ever. Yeah. Okay, you can all go into whether he's at the peak of his career or not. <clears throat> statistically, he, he is the best ever. It's statistically, he is. Yeah. Um, that will draw a lot of engineers, mechanics, and sponsors 
to the team. Yeah. And so from Fred, it's it's a very clever play for not only yeah, are called branding and PR and noise, and he's getting this unbelievable talent, but he will know Lewis's ability to not only offer a lot to that team, galvanize that team, maybe bring it, because Fred's probably gone into Ferrari and gone, what is going on here? Because let's face it, we all know under Bonotto, it, it appeared from the outside that they fell apart a little bit. Well, it's not just that. The, the, during races, they were asking drivers what they yeah. thought about it, pit stops. It seemed like they really didn't have control yeah, of what yeah, was yeah. going on. So Fred's thought, right, let's bring somebody in from the outside who can really show us what a championship winning team should look like and how it should run. Because Lewis brings all of that expertise. 100%, yeah. But also people are going to go, oh, well, I was, I was umming and ahhing about Ferrari. But if Lewis is going there, screw it, I might go. The opportunity to work with Hamilton and Leclerc, not to forget, at Ferrari, seems like too good an opportunity. So it's a very clever move from Fred there. And let's, let's come back to your sim point now. But one thing I want to bookmark for the future, it can... It can excite people who've always said no to Ferrari, including the likes of Adrian Newey. Going to drop that little Easter egg in there. We'll come back to that in two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to pick up on that point as well. So the sim thing, I think, yeah, let's, let's, let's assume there's no emotion in it. Let's assume that Fred has always been going, come on, Lewis. I'm at Ferrari now. Come on over. And Lewis has been like, nah, 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 not keen, not keen. Like, sorry, Fred. It's been 15 years, mate. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. But then he has two back-to-back -back years where not only are Mercedes uncompetitive, they're slightly cluelessly uncompetitive. Yeah. You know, it's, they're sort of hot and cold. They're not really sure where they're going. There's a bit of friction. They're, Mercedes are obviously very clearly invested in George. It's a bit of like, mm, what's going on? Yeah. Lewis signs that kind of slightly half-assed extension. But then you're right, maybe gets into the sim over the winter or at the end of last year thinks i'm not sure this is that much better like yeah. yeah it's a bit of improvement so he thinks right so next year's a write-off 2024 not going to happen red bull going to run away with it i'm going to sit there with another win this year then i've got 2025 then there's no way i know historically having been in this game for long enough where they're not suddenly going to beat red bull in 2025 that's not going to happen no. so i've got two winless years ahead then i'm going to be 41 four winless years behind me what like do I have the energy to go and start all over again? Yeah. You know, so maybe he just suddenly thought, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. And Fred's been knocking at my door long enough. Call him up. Because the very interesting thing that happened is Lewis parted away with his management. Just before this all came out, yeah, he, did, yeah. he parted away with his management, which suggests they effed up or something went wrong in the negotiations. They either made a miss move or they didn't present all the facts that maybe... Lewis, you know, maybe they're all year they were going, look, Fry want you, or Red Bull want you, Fry want you, whatever. And over the winter, Lewis says, I'm just going to call Fred. So Fred, look, what's going on? My team have been telling me that you want me all year. I drove the sim. It's pretty crap. Like, what's on the offer? And Fred said, look, this, I will offer you anything. Yeah. Or John Elkin, because that's apparently who's been heavily involved as well. Yeah. Um, and Lewis has gone, well, my management didn't, didn't tell me any of this. Yeah. And sacked them off and yeah. did, did the deal himself. Yeah. But that's a potential because yeah, yeah. it sounds like from the outside, Ferrari basically gave him a blank piece of paper. Said, fill in your contract, off we go. Well, they're, they're absolutely, that's clear, mate. Yeah. That's absolutely clear. Because a big part of it is future initiatives. I think it's it's been sort of dripped out that Mercedes at a board level weren't prepared to give Lewis a kind of... Uh, Ambassador. Uh, a, yeah, this yeah. kind of like long life post F1. Yeah. And we've seen it, you know, they, I mean, I know he's not always that keen to do sponsorship activity, but they've used George in a lot of activity have, work, yeah. not a lot of Lewis. And I think he felt a little bereaved that after everything that he's done for them, because let's not forget Lewis has been signed with Mercedes since he was like a freaking teenager. Yeah, he was, yeah. Um, that they weren't then there happy to kind of back him in everything he wants to do outside the sport, where it seems like rumours are, Ferrari said, we'll do anything you want. We'll do anything you want, just sign. Because it appears like it happened quite quickly. But how quickly can anything like that? No, really it doesn't. No, happen? no, no, no. This, this, um, this has been months and months and months, mate. This don't things like this don't. Or at least quick. initial contact. Yeah, yeah, has yeah. It's been yeah. months and months and months. But, but, but if it is a Clark Blanche in the sense, then it doesn't have to take long. If it's literally like whatever you want, literally, Lewis. If you are coming here, whatever you want, yeah. we'll sign it. Then it doesn't have to take that long. Mm. But the initial approach had to be months away. Yeah. That's not literally a phone call. And then two or three weeks. Um, so Adrian Newey. Mm. So obviously in and amongst this week and uh, at time of recording, we have no further information on this. There's been this slightly weird story around Christian Horner and Red Bull. Yeah. Um, and 
we don't really know what's going on. Allegations have been made. He's denied them. We don't know what the allegations are. We uh, There's no inkling. It's an investigation by Red Bull, not Red Bull Racing, blah, blah, blah. But people have said maybe Christian Horner will have to step down or he'll be fired. Who mm. knows? And there's also word that Christian Horner and Adrian Newey's contracts are weirdly linked. That if either one of them leaves the team, it enables the other to leave at the same to leave, time. Yeah. And do we think Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari is a big enough pull to tempt Adrian Newey should there be no Christian Horner at Red Bull to think, well, maybe I'll do one last hurrah. Because Adrian's been flirting with leaving F1 for years now, at least leaving Red Bull for years. He spoke about it the, on, a, on a podcast that Yeah, done. that Ferrari really aggressively chased him at one stage, didn't he? But he Two wasn't or three times. Yeah, he wasn't prepared to go because yep. of his family and stuff. But, you know, I think most of his family are now grown up and, and out of the house. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he could keep working for another 20 years, but he might not want to. Mm -hmm. So that theory of, right, let's go and... Let's go and work with Ferrari and Hamilton for a few years and see what it's like. He said that in his podcast as well, that he, if there's one drive on the grid he wanted to work with, it was Lewis. So he literally come out of his mouth. So could, I mean, that could be quite unbelievable if in this next few weeks, prior to the season even beginning, we have <laughs> Gunther Steiner getting fired and Dretti getting ignored and rejected, which just seems bloody bizarre by F1, Hamilton moving to Ferrari, Christian Horner stepping down and being sacked from Red Bull and Adrian Newey moving Ferrari ahead of 20. I mean, it would just be, that would be mind-boggling. I'm not sure I want Adrian Newey to move to Ferrari because, and then, because of the competition, it'll all be about, it'll all be about, it'll be just Ferrari again, just be the, be the fastest car. I, I want competition, mate. You know, I want I want two or three teams to be the yeah. But Adrian's new Adrian new has been at uh, Red Bull since whatever two thousand and ten. But look how fast they are. No, no, but they haven't every single year been that fast. No, but there've been plenty had, of years that he's been there. He's got it wrong. Yeah, but they've had a competitive car for a long time, mate. So, but for, so Ferrari, they ain't won nothing though. They've won races. They've won races, but they haven't won championships. No, the, but they've always the, had a competitive car. My well, point being that they're are been, competitive though because. Look at Mercedes and Red Bull. They've been the competitive cars. No, they've been the, the dominant cars. Over the last 10 or 15 years, yeah. They've been the dominant yeah. cars. But I, I think, you know, this is the whole thing in Formula 1, is that is that there's always, always a dominant car. It's very, very rare to have two teams level enough to fight it out over a championship year. But isn't that why they keep trying to change the regulations to, to bunch everyone up? Yeah, but it's impossible. Well, because the thing is, if you... If you lay out a load of rules and give it to the cleverest people in the world, because the people in Formula One, aerodynamicists, mechanics, whatever, they are the best in the world at what yeah, they course. do. Someone will always figure one idea out that makes them faster than anyone else. Yeah, maybe. You look, yeah, at, yeah. You look at Formula One historically, there is always a dominant team. You get these gems of years here and there where two teams or a magic year where three teams are somehow involved with the championship. In my lifetime, I can probably think of like five occasions where that's happened, where two or three teams have been fighting all year long for a championship. But, you know, if you look, yes, Red Bull have been arguably the first or second fastest team since 2010. Yes. Arguably. Yes. Um, and Adrian New will be a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. But there were a good five years there where Merck dominated them. Yeah. So just because he goes to Ferrari doesn't mean that Ferrari are straight away magically going to become the fastest team. Yeah. Because he wasn't as clever as Mercedes were with their engine development and everything that he does yeah, for aerodynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think you can literally just go, oh, well, if Adrian New goes to Ferrari, Ferrari are going to win everything. And that's a lot of pressure on him mm -hmm. as well. Because maybe, the, you know, there's a culture uh, battle there. Maybe it doesn't work the same way. Maybe the ideas don't land as well. Mm -hmm. It's all got to come together. Yeah, Red yeah. Bull bowed down to Adrian New and said, whatever you want, we'll build yeah. it. Um, and then be, built a team around him, essentially. Uh, built a team around yeah. him and built a car that around him. So, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, whatever he said went. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, that wasn't always the case in previous teams. Williams, McLaren, things like that, you yeah. know, he didn't have complete rule. And so yeah. maybe with Ferrari, he won't get that again. But, I mean, we're stretching there because that's really like a deep, <laughs> the black hole of Twitter. But <laughs> we found that comment. But long story short, then let's boil it down. How do you think Hamilton will fare? 
That's the question, because we've got another year of him at Mercedes. There was some talk of maybe Mercedes would ask him to take a sabbatical, but I don't see that coming at all, given the relationship and history that they've had. I think they'll have one more year to bow out and see what happens. Well, Mercedes Mercedes didn't have a clue about this, by the way. They no, got com- they've said as much. Co- oh, right, okay. Yeah, they've come out and said they had absolutely the, no clue. Com- they would have been completely un mm-hmm. because they, they don't know what's going on, yeah. because ideally, if they'd have got a whiff or known about this, in an ideal world, that's what you do. Lewis, you go on sabbatical mm-hmm, for, mm-hmm. because now he's got a whole year with them, and uh, they, they're not they're not going to favour him. They're going to favour George, obviously, because George mm-hmm. is the future. Mm-hmm. Lewis is outgoing, and you know I know they all come out and say that we're all going to give a hundred percent, but that that won't happen. And then obviously the knowledge that Lewis will take with him to Ferrari from Mercedes. So it seems a bit odd to me actually that. It's been allowed. That's been allowed to happen, but happens all the time. Though. Yeah, I, it happens. I, and if you listen I, to any of those F1 driver podcasts, sorry, driver podcasts on the F1 thing, they all sign these contracts years in advance. The last time it happened publicly was Alonso, Alonso to McLaren when he still had a year left at Renault and he was we won the championship. So that was the last time it happened publicly. But you hear a lot they have options or they sign contracts. And even if you think about it, some drivers announce it midway through the season or the, uh, that's when it's on, normally early done, on right? in the season. Or at least that's when it's announced. Mm. And no matter what, they still take knowledge. Yeah. Even if he has a year off, he's still taking knowledge. Yeah. So I don't think it's that surprising. It's just surprising that we know about it so early on. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe maybe it would have been less of a less of a surprise if we would have known about it halfway through the year. Yeah. yeah. So it, you're right. It seems weird. It seems like an anticlimax. Yeah. And it seems weird. But but yeah, he's got he's got this year ahead no matter what. And you're right. It's going to be an unspectacular year unless that car's more competitive than we think. But either way, the team will naturally and should prioritise George and the development of the car around George, not around Lewis. So you've got to think it's it's hard for Lewis to really have a break, you know, an amazing year this year. Um, so he's got to sit around and wait. But then he moves to Ferrari, a team with a completely different ideology, car, mentality, everything, and steps into bed with a guy who's been there for donkey's years. That's his sort of team. Okay, he's lost a little bit of, what do you call it, reputation, Charles Leclerc, over the last couple of years, last 18 months. But I don't think the team doubt him as much as maybe some people in the public do. Um, they can't do it, just give him a new contract. Yeah, giving him a new contract. They, I think they still he's still their chosen one. Yep. Um, and over one lap, we would assume he will be faster than Lewis. I, I, I think, I think I said this. I, I think I definitely said it to Paul. I think over in qualifying, I think you'll find Leclerc will um, beat Hamilton. Most. You would assume so. I think you so, would definitely yeah. assume. Yeah. I think Leclerc is one of the fastest one lap drivers on the grid. I agree, mate. And yeah. has proven it over and over he again. Just makes too many mistakes. Takes too many mistakes, too many risks. But this is where it's going to be fascinating, right? Because Hamilton's expertise, uh, championship winning pedigree or something like that could be the perfect lesson for Leclerc. Look how much he absolutely adored his relationship with Vettel. And I think Mm. Leclerc and Vettel are still very close. Mm. And it may be having a fiery young teammate like Science next to him has maybe been a bit of Leclerc's unpinning Mm. because he didn't have that sort of figure to look at and go, oh, that's interesting he does that. Or that's fascinating, that preparation. And so having Lewis come in, maybe he's going to make him go, okay, well, if I actually just take half a tenth there, I'll gain two tenths there. And I, who knows? Yeah, yeah. But he could dial out his mistakes. But I, I definitely think, yeah, over one lap throughout their time at Ferrari, I would be very shocked if Leclerc doesn't out-qualify Hamilton. Yeah. Um, however. 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 If they've got a championship winning car, I'd put my ass on Lewis winning a championship over Leclerc. Hmm. Interesting. Personally. In year one, in 2026, uh, 2025. It, 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 if they've got a championship winning car in 2025, Lewis finishes above Leclerc, for sure. I disagree. Really? I think in 2025, year one, Lewis will finish behind Leclerc in the championship. I think it would take him at least half a year to get up to speed. No, if they've got a championship car. Championship winning car uh, in 2025. In championship winning car. I, I, I think it will take him half a year in any car to get up to speed with Leclerc. So Leclerc would win his championship in 2025 then? If yes. they had a championship winning car. If they car. have a championship winning car. Fair. The, the, I think Leclerc, because if you look historically at any driver change, it always takes a driver at least half a year just to get to grips with the dynamics. And the, There's no testing anymore is the other thing. Apart from Lewis. 
No, even Lewis. What, when right. he joined Mercedes in the first year, Rosberg dominated him. Two yeah, wins to Lewis's bit, first. But had a ter- that was a terrible car. No, it wasn't. It was a competitive car. Rosberg what? got two wins and Hamilton got one. When it's they 13, were, they were ter- when it no, a terrible car. No, not 13. at all. They were the second fastest team behind Red Bull. Oh. Or third fastest, maybe. But it was a competitive car. That was when they started to come through. Because the year before was when uh, Rosberg and Schumi started to get pole positions and be on the podium. Uh-huh. 13, they were looking competitive. But Lewis just took a long time to get up to speed. Fair. So he fin- so Ro- Rosberg really looked like the stronger driver in 2013. Well, that didn't happen at McLaren, though, did it? Well, McLaren, he joined as a rookie. Yeah. He joined as the first ever, you know, drive in. Uh, d- yeah. Fucking demolished the world. But a- any any driver, no matter what level, what skill... Verstappen is probably the only argument from Toro Rosso to Red Bull. It does seem to take... Well, that's not at true. At least... A f- Go on. Well, but how long did it take Verstappen to win a world championship? No, I just said Verstappen is an example. R- Toro Rosso to Red Bull. He won the first race. So he's an... Ex- he's a, uh, he won they- the first race, but I'm talking about championships. Oh, yeah, because then he had a fucking downturn. When yeah. So like a petulant kid. <laughs> Crashing but, into everyone. But, but yeah, okay... <laughs> I'm sure there are exceptions. <laughs> in, ge- in general, it yeah. takes drivers time to get up to speed. And Leclerc is, is base. That is his home. So he's already in. I would expect in that first year, Leclerc to beat Hamilton over a championship year, no matter what the competitiveness of the car. I would just expect it. 2026, I think, is the big year. And I think that's Lewis's play. I think Fair Lewis's play is uh, one last roll of the dice, uh, new regs. How many more new regs have I got in me? Mm. <laughs> Um, I'll this make be the it. play because it's it's he's probably like it's half a dozen one half a dozen the other. Mm. I stay at Mercedes and I don't win anything, and then I I bet on 2026 being good, or I move to Ferrari and end my career in red. Have a change, have a change, yep. give it a last go, and if I don't win, I don't win. Like yep. okay, if Mercedes win a championship winning car in 2026, so be it. Yeah, I had a go. I've had a go. Yeah, um, and if I do win, I've I won a championship at Ferrari, Mercedes, and McLaren. Unbelievable! And yeah, yeah. is undoubtedly the goat. Yeah. If he goes to Ferrari, and I think even wins a race, <laughs> I'm like, come <laughs> on, you, 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 you now can't knock Stop the guy. Like, you know, race. People are just desperate to knock the guy. But you know, if he can just go there, just win a race, I think people are like, oh, go on. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fascinating, mm. and we've got this unfortunately dead year ahead of us. 2024, where we're expecting the pecking order to not have changed very much. Very few drivers have moved. If any, no, no, I don't think any drivers have moved. I think everyone's. Do you think he's are. done the right thing, moving? Yes, you do. Well, I would say that because I love Ferrari. <laughs> um, I think he's done the right thing because it's it's legacy. There, whatever happens, if he goes to Ferrari, and it's a disaster. Leclerc walks all over him. He does two years, doesn't win a race. It all looks like a bit of a misery. He's done it. Who cares? He walks away from the sport, drove for three different teams, three of the greatest teams, bow out. If he goes and he does anything that gets near some kind of success, let alone wins a championship, he cements himself probably as the greatest of all time, no matter what Verstappen goes on to do. Because that would be unprecedented, I think, to 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 win with those teams across that span of a career, blah, 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 against a Leclerc, all of these things. And I think if he stays at Mercedes... What a way to just dwindle off into the... Sunset. Yeah. Mm. Who wants that? At least this is a risk. And and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work out. Look at Shumi coming back with Mercedes. Yeah. It, it didn't work out, but five, six, seven, how many years? No, 10 years on, we all look back at going, actually, it was a lot better than we all realised. Mm. He built them into this championship winning team. Maybe that's what Hamilton will do. Maybe it won't be a successful two or three year period. He'll leave a legacy there. But maybe he'll leave a legacy and he'll mm. turn the team into returning some kind of domination form and they'll yeah. all thank him for being being that for them. Mm. Possible to know, isn't but it? But weren't Nicky Lauda responsible for a lot of Mercedes' upturn? No. So, no. well... I think he won't know. Sh- they all credit Schumacher. Fair. They all, yeah, if you I listen, know that bit. Yeah, I, yeah. I listen to that podcast. Yeah, yeah. They all credit Schumacher for really de- developing and turning Putting them on the map. Yeah, yeah. Lauda is often credited for getting Hamilton to Mercedes. He was the one that seduced Lewis to uh-huh. join Mercedes. I think if you hear from it, Lauda was their greatest in-house critic. I don't think necessarily they all say Lauda turned Mercedes F1 into what it is. Okay. Uh, from those that have done podcasts and interviews that I've heard, they credit Toto with the money, yeah. Schumacher with the championship winning mindset. Yeah. And Which those is what two- Lewis is going to hope to go and do at Ferrari, right? I think so. Right. I think he's trying to do what Alonso and Vettel did. Yeah. Of, of let's get this team back to what Schumacher did. You know, but like they've all tried. I mean, even Kimi in some 
shape or form, but weirdly, <laughs> in a slightly different way. Um, Kimmy won a championship, though. With yeah, yeah, Ferrari. yeah, yeah, kind of flukily. <laughs> the one that Alonso and so Hamilton didn't, lost. Didn't Alonso win one as well? No, not with Ferrari, no. Oh. Alonso and Vettel both gave it a good old stint. Yeah, I know. Got Vettel close. Didn't, yeah. Both Vettel and Alonso got, Alonso got closer than Vettel did. Twice Alonso got very close, missed out in the final races and things like that. Fair. Vettel, mm, not as close. No, he, he had that one know. year really fluffed up. But, he kept um, crashing into the wall, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> Do you remember that wall. flapping? Yeah, God. <laughs> what a legend, though. Um, but yeah, fascinating. <laughs> and it's going to be fascinating to see which route Merck go in terms of replacing Lewis. Um, what it means for there. You know, hey, look, speaking of Vettel, could we see a return? I don't think to Mercedes, but you never know. Um, so lots to be excited about, uh, but a boring year ahead of us until we get to the exciting 2020. I'd love to see Vettel back so in F1. So yeah. Would Where would you put him? What, in a car? I wouldn't put him back unless it was in a race winning car. I wouldn't like to see him come back at Audi. Just to make which the numbers I think up. is the, the okay. rumor. I think that's the And they're going to be slow, Audi, are they? You wouldn't, you would think not, they are giving it everything. I mean, they're doing... It's a bit of an old-school F1 approach, as in we've not seen a major manufacturer or major team do this for a while. Got a lot of knowledge, buy in, Audi. Buy in early, buy an existing team, start their prep years out, put in place serious people, put in place infrastructure, money. I mean, they're giving it a real go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is their this is their going to be their headline motorsport mm. programme. So, yeah, yeah. They're coming at it with the full expectation to win. Uh, will they win out the box? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But but three to five, I bet they're saying three to five years. I reckon 2029, 20, they're probably thinking they should have at least be in contention. Oh, I'll be about 85 by then. I yeah. won't, well, won't be able to see so, the so by then. <laughs> uh, but, you know, as, an, as a German manufacturer coming to the sport, I could see them trying to, trying to seduce Vettel. Yeah, fair. Um, be interesting to see. <laughs> Anyway, a uh, little bit of car news aside from the F1 news. Uh, firstly, RS6 GT on the on the on the word of Audi. Speaking about Audi, yeah, RS6 GT. Nice segue. Let's, let's pull up some some stats on this. So I found out about. This. I had a meeting with Audi the other day, and they they mentioned this, and I got really excited, and then I got a little bit underexcited. <laughs> um, so this is like the send off for this generation RS6. Yeah, um, looks amazing. Inspired by the old IMSA car, isn't it? I think. Um, to old like uh, yeah IMSA GTO race car from 1989 yeah I was born great livery great wheels 660 examples worldwide good it's a little bit lighter I think got some aero that makes it a tiny bit I don't quicker. think it looks that good either I think it looks don't stupid you? it's got good no. bucket seats well um, the seats are alright but I think the I don't think it looks good at all mate it looks, it looks Audi silly. RS6 is supposed to be understated this looks mm. like I would agree with you there, actually. Yeah, Paul Wallace has <laughs> done it. The dream is that it's like the ultimate family wagon, isn't it? Because it yeah. is just that. You don't really know, but you sort of know. You know. It's got presence, but then it just looks like a boring estate car. Yeah. Each Let's car will be powered by the same 4-litre twin-turbo V8 as the regular R6. Still pumping out the same 621 horsepower and 626. So, it, like many specials, not a lot's changed. However, lightweight materials and aero tweaks reduce the 0 6 time to 3.3 seconds. Oh, and what, from 3.6? 3.7, um, <laughs> yeah, whatever it 3. did. 3.4. 0. 0.1 <laughs> seconds. And now 1.5 seconds quicker to 125 miles an hour, which no one can do. So, yep, it's uh, 10 millimeter lower and stiffer. So it sounds mightily uncomfortable. It's quite a lot of money for just... Be more say, inconvenience. Well, best part about it, 180 grand. Yeah, which I is... I mean, I can't help but think it's cool because I like the way it looks, but everything you said is right. This is I'm, the Carrera T of the RS6, shut mate. Shut up, shut up. It's, a, it's, a, it's a Bins well, car. The, <laughs> like, the see, pricing's the wrong way. We can't sell no. any more RS6's performances, so I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll paint them, we'll lower them, put stupid wheels no, on it. No, this is cooler. Some... This is cooler than that. I this mean, is cooler it's worse. than that. I honestly don't think it looks cool. I like I the it wheels. Worse. I do like the wheels. Right. I, if I was a really silly person, I would have one of these. If I, well, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 180 grand is quite hard to follow. No, maybe I do think it's a mess. Yeah. I like, okay, here's, what, here's where we're going to go for it. I'm going to say it. I like the way it looks. Everything else about it. All right. Well, hold on a minute. Let's let me let me turn this on its head a bit more then. Please. There's an M5 Touring coming in a minute. Oh, yeah. Well, the i5 Touring got launched today. And how'd that get on? What do you mean? Well, is, is it all right or what? Yeah, I think nice so. Nice car? 
I guess. Yeah. But, but that's an i5. It's electric car. We're talking about combustion cars. We're not right. talking about electric cars anymore. Fed up with it. M5 Touring. M5 Touring. Well, one of them. Oh, but then, Similar money. No, because that's standard RS6 or M5 Touring. This that's is gonna... standard with some seats in it and some wheels, mate. Oh, no, it's not. It's a Compl- limited edition, mate. It's a future yeah, because classic. it's got 600... That'll be worth at least... 45 grand. In five years' time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't think we can always knock these limited editions. I get why manufacturers do it, and you're right. Okay, it's an end of a run. We got some. We need to sell some cars. Yeah. But but I do think it's kind of cool because I like the old IMSA car. I saw it at the at the Fat Ice race, and I do like the sort of aggressive bucket seats. Why you want those in an RS6? I don't know. <laughs> I just like stupid cars, mate. And I think I like those wheels. Look how aggressive that is. Look at that front wheel arch. But I'm not it's interested, chunk. mate. It's a normal car. Look at that from the back. But the normal one looks nice from the back. No, but that is like wild. You had your car 25 minutes and got rid of it because you hated it. Good point. So I'd hate this more. Yes. And you'd hate it even more because you'd blow 60 grand in 10 minutes. Which I nearly did on my car. But um, <laughs> Yeah, it did, yeah. Okay, so we're writing this off. This is, yes. a, this is a no. We don't like this. Yeah. Bring on Audi EVs. That's what I say. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of, speaking of EVs. Oh, no. Taycan refresh today. Oh. So we had the... Ma- <laughs> Does it work, this one? Well, we had the McCann chat last week. People got very upset with us. Yeah. They don't like us talking about EVs. Sorry about they that. They think we're in dark old ages slagging them off, or they're just bored about... <laughs> in dark about ages, but this is the future. Literally, it's all we've got to talk about, people. This yeah. is slowly becoming an EV podcast because the car world is becoming an EV world. Yeah. There's nothing else to talk about apart from EVs, unfortunately. When they've realised they got it wrong and they go back to combustion, well, no. we'll go back to combustion. Well, see, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I'm really excited about a lot of things here. Uh, yeah. Firstly, the fact that their claimed range on the low-spec car is 412 miles. An auto car tested it in real-world scenario and got 364. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Big money, though, as, as Taycans have been How much? from launch. That base car that I just said uh, starts 86 and a half grand. Yeah. Now, I thought we'd have a bit of fun. All right, then, mate. Spec one up. Oh, I thought we was going on a rather road trip. No. <laughs> That's coming soon, in <laughs> April and September. You can join us when we announce details in weeks to come. The two lead cars will be Taycans. Oh, hey, maybe. <laughs> no. I thought Imagine we'd, that. I thought we'd spec one up. And this is purely, yeah. I don't want to go into the whole EV chat, because it is actually quite interesting tech that they've got on this, the longer range battery and things like that, huh? and the fact that you can theoretically charge it very quickly and all this kind of stuff. I think it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. But people don't want to talk us talking about EVs. I've people never think seen that a Taycan we, with them stupid wheels. People think we hate. EVs, even though I keep telling everyone I'm really into EVs these days. I'm just not having that many good situations with them. Anyway, (laughs) we're not talking about EVs. We're just specking a Taycan. That's all that's happening. Right. Because what I want to draw people's attentions to are the insane costs of options for a Porsche that make their starting price pointless. And we we touched on this with McCann (laughs) and people didn't quite believe us. So I just thought we'd launch into it. So here we go. This is the base Taycan. Starts at 86 and a half grand Mm. in the UK. I want to see how lowly I can spec one because we know these things depreciate like a rock, right? I found one online today. 2021 car, 16,000 miles, 50 grand. Okay, so... Standard car. Standard car. So like like for like. So I do not want this to be... That That ain't done that bad. In three or four years? Or three years? What is it? 71 plate, was it? 2021. Yeah. It's not done too bad. What was, it? what was it, 75, 80 grand new? Well, what it depends it, on spec. Or... I don't know what the spec would have been. That's the whole oh. point, right? This is, this is what I'm getting into, Tony. This is the problem. Because the list price wouldn't have been that bad. It's, you would say, oh, that's about 25 grand depreciation. Yeah. But that's not what the list price would have been, I would guarantee you. So let's be aggressive, but spec a car that we would actually want, okay? Right. So we're, we're not going to go aggressive. Now, do you want to do a 911 then? Uh, no, hold on a <laughs> second. <laughs> you would be quite happily with a no-cost black, wouldn't you? Yeah, t- yeah, nice but, uh, assault I, black. I'm not happy with that. All right, mate. I want a colour. So I'm going to come along here and go from the Dreams range and I'm going to go Provence. Why don't you go... Oh, right. it, oh my God. It's a £1,400 paint. And it's like a lilac-y, pinky purple. Okay. Okay. Going to keep coming down here. Uh, go past paint to sample and now paint to sample plus. So Put some wheels on it, mate. Well... You say that. Put some wheels on it because the stock wheels are disgusting. Horrendous. horrendous. I've never seen one with them wheels. 19 inch. The other option for the 19 inch are equally horrendous. They just have some black on them. No. 900 quid for that. So if we want to step up to 20 inch for some equally disgusting wheels, two grand immediately. No. 
So then you go, right, are there any nice wheels here? Let's look at these RS. That one. 21 inch wheels. Yes. We have to. What's this? Oh, no, okay, that's fine. Three and a half grand for those, mate. Yeah, that's it. Put them on. Three and a half grand we've just spent on wheels. Yep. I wouldn't have done that. What I would have would gone for then? a lesser option, but still probably have to spend two grand. Three and a half grand we've just spent on wheels. Yeah, we, now, have, we had to do that. We can definitely nice. just have the black leather for no cost. I am tempted <laughs> by the Blackberry, the purple. Where's it gone? There we go. Blackberry interior, but it's £2,700. I think I'm never going to be able to sell that car, so let's just go black. No cost black leather option, right? Right. Yeah. But you've, you've, I mean, you've got, you can't sell it anyways. It's purple on the outside or pink or whatever color it is. So you might as well do whatever you like the inside. Okay. But I'm keeping it black. I'm okay. Keeping it black. Fine. Seats, comfort seats, uh, mm. 14 way. What would you have here? Well, I'll put the electric ones on. So yeah, they're both they're electric. Nice, they're all car. electric. They're all electric, mate. All right, well, what have you got? 14-way adjustable or 18-way or 8-way adjustable or 18-way adjustable? 18-way, 18 yeah, put the Larry ones 1300 on. 1300 quid. Yeah, put I them on. I don't think we need that. Better mate. seats. Oh, but to be fair, look, you're, only, you're only saving 300 quid for the comfort seats. Yeah, put them on. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, all these other options, mate. No, we don't need <laughs> massage seats, do we? Don't need seat heating or seat ventilation. Seat heating? In the rear. Oh. Don't need that, do well. we? Well. No, we don't, mate. All right. Exterior packages. We don't need the sport design pack. Who cares? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Are you trying to really load this up or trying to do it? As... No, no, I don't want to load it oh, up. Oh, okay. I try and do it as cost effective as possible. Right. So there's a few places I would have already saved a bit of money. Okay. Because I, as I said, we know that these cars depreciate like a ton. I understand. Also, like a lead brick. So let's just see what we can get away with cost effectively. So all of this crap we can buy. Like powertrain. Let's see what's going on here. Rear axle steering. Don't need that in a Taycan. I'm using this as a daily. Torque vectoring, don't need that. <laughs> Sports chrono package. No. Don't, don't think I need that. Uh, don't need carbon ceramics. No. No, don't need... Oh, there we go. Look, performance battery plus. So that's the range extenders. We want that. Four and a half grand yeah, for the range extenders. Yeah, you've extender. got to have that, mate. That's the difference between getting home or not. Don't need any of the fancy lights, personally. What? I, I did experience them in the um, Cayenne, but we did, why do you need them? How much night driving are you doing, mate? Are you in Norway? Well, I won't be doing any of that. It'll run out of battery. <laughs> So I'm going to skip that. But pan roof. Pan roof at 1300 Yeah, you've got to put that on. Privacy it's glass? Premium car, yeah. It's got to put privacy on. I wouldn't have privacy, but anyway. Well. Interior packages. Do we need any? No, I don't need any of this crap. No. But it's it's what about expensive. music? Yeah, let's get some music. Let's put some music in. Uh, assistant systems. Hold on a sec. Now, I would do Inno Drive, but you wouldn't do Inno Drive. No, I'll do it myself. Adaptive thanks. cruise control. I don't think I need no. adaptive cruise control. Surround view with active parking support. Don't I mean I can park myself if you're just trying to save some money? It's got parking camera in it. I like it's a thousand pounds for that. Yeah. A uh, head-up display, mm. twelve hundred quid. I don't think I want it. No, uh, if we're saving some money, we don't need it, do we? No. So let's get infotainment. There we go. So uh, Bose sound. I'm not yeah. going Burmeister. No, Bose. Bose right. at a thousand pounds. Yeah. Right. That's gone up. We've that six hundred quid. We've rattled through that, mate. Yep. A hundred grand. Oh. What, 30 grand of options? No, no, it's it's not because we started at... Um, what was it, 80 something, was it? Yeah, yeah, there we go. 13,000 pounds worth of options. We haven't done very much. No. But but hold on a minute. You could have we could have not cut the grand off that. We could have had the lesser wheels I've, and the and the normal paintwork, but it still would have been ninety-five grand. Yeah. It's way oh, too much money, mate. I'll wait for them to be fifty. Well but they're exciting. fifty now. Ex no, but they're not with this range extender. Yeah, it's only exciting if you've got the 400 miles. Right. And so, then by the time that's 50 grand, there'd be a 600 mile one. Yeah, probably. And then you've got to wait for that to be 50. I'll ask Porsche for a long time later. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm excited and let's wait. So I've always loved the Taycan. You have liked the Taycan as well. And if they've just, it's quite interesting they've been able to do that much on the same car, you know, that much of an update effectively on the same car. That's quite interesting, I think. Oh, with the same batteries, do you think? No, no, no. It's a new battery module. A oh, fine. Um, anyway, super interesting. But there we go. Let's not talk about EVs anymore because we're going to start losing subscribers. Um, an exciting episode, a big episode. If you're a Formula One fan or Ferrari fan or Hamilton fan, if you're actually not a Hamilton or fan. Or a road trip fan. Oh, yeah, a road trip fan. So, yeah, stay <laughs> tuned for that. Yeah. Um, because more information, will it be next week? It could be two weeks. Anyway, stay it's tuned. It's coming. More information soon. Um, if you want to follow Tony over the next week or so, see what he's up to at Tony Gravel Car Sales on most social media platforms. Uh, I'm at Seen Through Glass. This podcast is at Behind the Glass underscore underscore podcast. 
Um, come back next week because we might have even more exciting announcements. Who knows? You never know your luck. A little teaser for you there. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. Bye.